We are coming at you live with another amazing edition of the Grapple Gurus. Hello, all you Biconics wrestling nerds out there. And welcome to, as I mentioned before, another rendition of the Grapple Gurus, your Biconics wrestling podcast, pay-per-view, and a PLE review team. I am El Jefe himself, Mikey. And as you can see, tonight I'm coming at you solo with this one here to bring you the review for WWE's Royal Rumble 2024 PLE that took place over this past Saturday, January 27th. So it's going to be a bit of a short one since it is just me tonight, but I am extremely excited to do this one. It's going to be a big test of my skills here. But before we jump into the review proper, just to get a little bit of housekeeping away, make sure that you stay up to date on all of what we have going on. First and foremost, follow us all over the social medias at BC WrestlePod, where you get updates on when our YouTube stuff goes live, when the live stream's happening, all the good works. Social media is going to be your best place to follow us. And if you like what you do after checking out the Biconics wrestling podcast youtube if you're feeling extra generous you can subscribe to our patreon because we are able to bring you this fun stuff to you and we have never before seen exclusive videos over on the patreon like our watch alongs for the pay-per-view where you can see me and andrew's reactions about a bunch of stuff that happened during the rumble you can also find us wherever your favorite podcasting network is to subscribe to that. If you cannot commit to our beautiful faces, you can commit to our voices. And it's a good time. And last but certainly not least, remember, keep it friendly in the chat. This is going to be a fun one. But with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into it. Overall, my thoughts of the Royal Rumble before we break down each match bit by bit, I will say... I watched the Royal Rumble twice. I watched it the first time with Andrew while it was live on Saturday, and then I watched it again on Sunday. And while this necessarily wasn't my personal favorite Rumble, I do think it did a pretty stellar job with certain things, but I also have my nitpicks with it. So we'll just get into it, shall we? The 2024 Royal Rumble took place this year in Florida from St. Petersburg, Florida, specifically at the Tropicana Field. And after the promo package, the intro bit, all that good stuff, we enter into our first match, which was the Women's Royal Rumble. So the way that I'm going to do this is I am going to go through all 30 women's entrances really quick and then highlight some of my favorite bits and pieces and then talk about the final four. So. From the beginning, coming in at number one is Natalia. Number two is a returning Naomi. Number three is the leader of Damage Control, Bailey. Number four is Candice LeRae. Number five, a forbidden door pick of Jordan Grace, the current TNA Knockouts champion. Number six is Indy Hartwell. Seven is Asuka. Number eight is Ivy Nile. Number nine is Katana Chance. Ten is Bianca Belair. Eleven is Kyrie Sane. Twelve was Tegan Knox. Thirteen was Caden Carter. Fourteen was Chelsea Green. Fifteen was Piper Niven. Sixteen was Zaya Lee. Seventeen was Zelina Vega. Eighteen was Maxine Dupree. Nineteen was Nia Jax. Number twenty was Shotzi. Twenty-one was Becky Lynch. Number twenty-two was Alba Fire. Number 23 was Shayna Baszler. Number 24 was Valhalla. 25 was Meechin. 26 was Zoe Stark. 27 was Roxanne Perez. 28 was debuting since signing the company a couple months ago, Jade Cargill. Number 29, Tiffany Stratton from NXT. And number 30, a returning Liv Morgan. So let's go over everything, shall we? So obviously the first big thing here is the fact that Naomi has returned to WWE. The former Trinity of TNA has come back to WWE and they didn't waste no time out the gate to bring her back in. And it's like she never left. For those of you that know the situation that happened with Naomi about a year, two years ago, actually, now that I think about it, 
She and Mercedes Monet walked out of WWE of their own accord. And the beautiful thing to see Trinity come back, or Naomi, sorry, of coming back here to WWE is that she made a name of herself outside of WWE and she never once bashed WWE for what happened and everything that went down with it. And I was super happy to see her back. The other big thing outside of Jade, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, the fact that we have Jordan Grace, your TNA Knockouts champion, enter the Rumble, that blew my mind. And as soon as Jordan entered the match, this is where things popped off for me. And honestly, this ended up making the Women's Rumble my match of the night from this point on. If you don't know who Jordan Grace is, you need to go check out TNA. Give her stuff a chance. Give TNA's knockouts division a champ. Their knockouts women's division is so good, you guys. And she put on a hell of a performance on this one. And, of course, the other thing that I want to talk about is the debut of Jade Cargill. She looked good. She felt great. It was so good to see. I Honestly, the women knocked it out of the park. And there was a lot of surprises. There were some good moments. There were some fun bits. My favorite in-ring moment, a couple of them included the Bianca and Jay Cargill stare off towards the ending of the Women's Royal Rumble. That is a WrestleMania match that I want to see immediately. I also love the comedy spot where Chelsea Green kept getting pounced and women, other women being thrown into her and just destroying her, which was a really fun moment. But... Now, let's get to the reason why we are here. So, your final four end up being Tiffany Stratton, Jade Cargo, Liv Morgan, and Bailey. So, everything is going all over the place. And what ends up happening is that Liv gets thrown out, Tiffany gets thrown out, and then ultimately Jade gets thrown out, which makes Bailey the 2024 Women's Royal Rumble winner. And she is going to be headlining a match at wrestlemania now according to the wrestling outlets and the reports it seems that bailey may end up facing eo for her championship at wrestlemania and based on the story that we've been given so far on smackdown it seems that is what's going to end up being the case for bailey i'm super happy that bailey won Obviously, I would have loved to see Becky win, but with the elimination coming up soon and news reports are confirming that the women's elimination chamber is going to see who faces Rhea at WrestleMania. It makes sense that Becky would go on to win the elimination chamber, but I'm so happy that Bailey won the Royal Rumble and she finally, finally got a Royal Rumble win. So now she could say that she has done it all in WWE. I'm super happy to see Bailey win. And honestly, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. From this point on, the Women's Royal Rumble ended up being my match of the night, just solely from all the surprises, the fun spots. The women just seem to consistently kill it in the Rumble every single year. This was so good. Fantastic. What a way to start. From this point on, the rest of the show is going to vary in degrees of my enjoyment. So without further ado, let's just rip the Band-Aid off. So after the Women's Rumble ends up, wraps up, and we get into the next match, we get confirmation that the next match is the fatal four-way for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. I was really surprised to see this match here, but I guess from a booking standpoint, you don't want to put this before the Men's Royal Rumble, but I thought this was interesting to see this match second on the card. So this sees Roman Reigns, your tribal chief, your current undisputed WWE Universal Champion, taking on the challengers of AJ Styles, Randy Orton, and L.A. Knight. Yeah. Sorry, I had to do that. Okay, so I'm going to start with the positives. I think Randy Orton looks good in the ring in the sense that I'm super happy to see him back. I think... Him coming back from injury was a feat in itself, and I think Randy Orton showed up and showed out, and it's nice to see that he hasn't lost the step. Other than that, this was your typical Roman's Reigns match, if I'm going to be completely honest about it. And for those of you who have been watching our 
product or who have been watching the WWE within the last three and a half years, we all have our Roman Reigns match bingo card where if you get five in a row, you end up getting a prize. And this match had everything that we come to expect. We see lots of false finishes. We see interference from the bloodline. This time it was interference from Solo Sokoa. We see a ref bump, which is starting to get on my nerves about it. And then we see LOL Roman Reigns wins. So ultimately towards the end of this, and I called it from the very beginning, looking at the four people here, I was like, Randy Orton's not getting pinned because the higher ups turned this into a fatal four way, which was originally supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one match between Roman because the higher ups didn't want Randy to get pinned too early from coming back from injury. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. I could totally see that point. Roman already beat LA Knight, and because LA Knight is a hot commodity for WWE and he is so organically over with the fans, I didn't see that LA Knight was going to be pinned again in the span of less than four months since last time Roman pinned LA Knight. That was at Crown Jewel back in November. By process of elimination, that just meant that AJ Styles was going to get pinned and Roman Reigns ends up pinning AJ Styles to stay your WWE undisputed universal champion. I will say I think this was probably one of be Roman's better matches within the last couple of months that I've seen him defend this title, which is not a lot. But it this was the easiest match to pick for me because no way was Roman losing this title. And then with the fact of the winner for the W for the men's rumble, which we'll get to in a little bit. I'm really hoping that a certain someone does finish his story this time at Royal rumble, not Royal rumble WrestleMania, but this match was okay. I didn't think it was bad, but I knew going into this match, what I was expecting and we got the same old, so here's hoping that we only have to put up with this for 70 more days. 68 at the time of this recording, but hopefully we only have to put up with this for 68 more days because then we'll be at WrestleMania and hopefully the men's winner will be able to take the titles from Roman. So we'll see that from here. The last thing I'll say is poor AJ Styles. Said I knew he was going to take the pin. And it's I know that AJ is about to enter his final stretch of his career. Poor man got pinned here. I'm interested to see where we take AJ next. And honestly, I'm interested to see what happens with Randy and LA Knight to see what paths they end up taking for WrestleMania this year. So then, once this match was over, we get into your semi-main event. Yes, because there's only four matches in the Royal Rumble this year. We get the United States Championship match between champion Logan Paul taking on the challenger, Kevin Owens. So I actually really enjoyed this match until we got to about the last five minutes of this match. So before we get to it, look, say whatever you will about Logan Paul. I cannot stand him. I don't forgive him for what got him in trouble when he visited abroad in Japan. I think his personality, him and his brother are very toxic individuals. And they are so irresponsible with the kind of power they have over their younger fan base, given the fact of how popular they are and what they promote and everything. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of their personal stuff. But as far as the in-ring goes, I will say Logan Paul is very athletic. I will give him that. And when he is paired up with someone who can carry him through a good match, it's never an issue that Logan Paul is going to pull out some fun stuff. And Logan Paul did pretty good. But as we all come to know, Kevin Owens ends up carrying a lot of this match, but not in the sense that we normally say the term carried, because Logan was also going back and forth with KO. And I thought this match was pretty fun. We got Kevin Owens being brutal, Logan Paul doing stuff to try to keep Kevin Owens down. And honestly, this match was starting to pick up, and I thought it was going to be really good. Of course, I didn't think Kevin Owens was going to win this match, which he did it in the long end, but let's get to the last five minutes. So one thing that I necessarily do not like when it comes to 
wrestling matches, whether it be in any promotion, is that I very wary of when we have an overbooked mess. What I mean by it is that there is like lots of moving parts going on. There's lots of things happening on the screen at once. And it causes such a mess, messy ending to the match that it takes you out a little bit. And this is what this match ended up having. So as we're getting close to the end of this match, Kevin Owens is about to have Logan Paul dead to rights when Logan Paul, one of his camera buddies, his camera friend, is distracting the ref, distracting the guards and everything. And this goes on for way too long. It goes on for two or three minutes, which then the brass nucks come into play. Logan Paul tries to hit Kevin Owens with the nucks. Kevin Owens ducks, takes the brass knuckles from Logan Paul, hits him, goes for the cover, and then as Kevin Owens is about to get the three, the ref notices that Kevin Owens is still wearing the brass knuckles, and it was at this moment that I hit my head on my forehead. I'm like, oh no, this is what we're going for. And sure enough, I was correct in my assumption because then the ref calls for the match for a DQ, and still your WWE United States Champion via disqualification, Logan Paul. If you haven't already surmised at this point, I do not like these types of finishes because it does nothing for me and it does nothing for the people involved. Yes, Kevin Owens didn't lose cleanly, so that is an argument that I can see for it. But if you weren't going to have this be a clean finish, then what was the... You know what? Trying to understand WWE logic is going to be very difficult, so I'm just going to be as objective as I possibly can. The ending took me out of this match because I hate it when they overbook this mess. This was a five-minute stretch of, oh, no, like this person's in the ring. Who are they? Why are they? What are they doing here? Oh, let me put the brass knucks here. Bada bing, bada boom. Kevin Owens is about to win. Oh, no, the ref actually catches cheating. That's crazy. And, of course, it would be the one time where it's the face in this scenario that gets caught for cheating, which is crazy. But I will say Kevin Owens did get a lick back because then he goes on a rampage and destroys Paul and just throws him around the ring, throws him through the table, throws him into the stairs, beats him up. And Kevin Owens is standing tall by the end of this match. Again, I'm going to reiterate to the fact that I thought this match was pretty decent. It was building up to be something fun until we got to the last five minutes and then it became an overbooked mess. So Logan Paul is still your champion. I'm still the mindset he's going to be losing that title to LA Knight and WrestleMania, but only time will tell. So now let's get into the final match of the evening. This was the men's Royal Rumble match. As I did with the women's Royal Rumble, I'm going to go through all of the entrance. And then I'm going to give you my quick thoughts. So with the men's, number one is Jay Uso. Number two, Jimmy Uso. Three is Grayson Walla. Number four is a returning Andrade. Number five is Carmelo Hayes from NXT. Six is Shinsuke Nakamura. Seven is Santos Escobar. Number eight is Karrion Cross. Number nine, Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Number 10, Carlito. 11 is Bobby Lashley. Number 12 is Ludwig Kaiser. 13 is Austin Theory. Number 14, Finn Balor. Number 15, the American Nightmare himself, Cody Rhodes. 16 is Big Bronson Reed. 17, Kofi Kingston. 18 is Gunther. 19 is Ivar. Number 20 from NXT is Braun Breaker. 21 is Omos. 22 is Pat McAfee. 23 is JD McDonough. 24 is R-Truth, 25 is The Miz, 26 is Damian Priest, 27 is CM Punk, 28 is Ricochet, 29 is Drew McIntyre, and returning from injury and number 30 at Sami Zayn. Okay, so where do I begin with this one? Let's start with the positives. I thought Carmelo Hayes did a really good job and showcasing his talents. I think his interaction with him, with him and Austin Theory has been a lot of fun. Whatever that new move that Austin Theory is using, it looked like some sort of ripcord, like pile, like whatever that move is. It was, ooh, it was a thing of beauty. So that's the positive. I love seeing that Andrade has come back to WWE. So hopefully this time he gets utilized properly because I love Andrade. I think he's awesome in the ring. He's so good. 
I loved his interaction that he had with Santos in this match where Santos tried to go for a camaraderie and Andrade was like, nah, bro, we're good. Everything else, oof. I'm going to be honest, and this is probably going to get me in trouble with some of you watching and some of the fandom out there. I thought this was not my favorite match. This was my least favorite match. This is my worst match of the evening. And let me explain before the pitchforks and torches come out. I say that this is my worst match of the evening only because it necessarily wasn't bad. It was just boring. Like, it was all predictable. There wasn't really any surprises for the men outside of Carmelo and Braun Breaker and a returning Andrade, but everything was very paint by numbers. I thought that it was just so predictable. Once Sami Zayn came and then everyone decided to throw each other out, my biggest pet piece of this match is first you had Jay and Jimmy fight it out because they were one and two, and then we, they got lost in the background, which is going to happen during a big multi-person bout like the Royal Rumble. But we totally forgot about them and we didn't play up on them. So obviously, I think we're getting Jimmy versus Jay at WrestleMania. How we're going to build to that match, who knows at this point. And I also feel like the men that they picked for the Rumble was very mediocre at best not to say that anyone is inherently bad in this match but i don't know it felt really weird i don't know why ricochet was here because ricochet is not being used properly anyway so it makes no sense why he was in here and then the final four was predictable too because the final four was drew mcintyre gunther cm punk and cody rhodes which is the four people that we really had stories for in terms of going into this rumble so Drew and Guther end up getting thrown out, and then we have a 10-minute match from CM Punk and Cody. I feel that this little match portion before we got the final elimination went on for too long. I don't think we need a 10-minute match. We do not need this to be prolonged. I will say, I did see CM Punk's little taunt to the camera about Cody. I did not come, I did not wait 10 years just to lose to Dusty's kid ouch but of course he was getting too cocky he tried to go for a second go to sleep which allowed cody Rhodes to throw punk over the top row and for the second year in the row the american nightmare cody Rhodes is your 2024 men's royal rumble winner and he will be going on to wrestlemania and he already called out roman reigns at the end so it's going to be cody versus roman at wrestlemania in philadelphia this year Cody celebrates in the ring as the Royal Rumble goes off the air. I will say, I think Cody Rhodes winning to me, it was either going to be him or Punk, but I'm really happy to see Cody finally win. For those of you who do not know, me, Minnie, and another good friend of ours all went to WrestleMania last year. We did all of the major shows, so we did NXT Stand and Deliver in the morning, night one of wrestlemania on that same saturday and then we did night two of wrestlemania on sunday and one of the biggest things that we were in disbelief of is when we walked out of night two with cody losing to roman where we felt cody should have won now there have been a lot of reports since punk's return that cody wasn't going to be at mania he's not going to be facing roman he's going to have to wait a little bit longer to complete the story I am hoping WWE, Triple H, the wrestling gods, whoever you want to subscribe to, I hope that Cody Rhodes finishes his story at WrestleMania this year because, and I'm personally, and my other co-host Luis is going to get mad at me for saying this, I think Roman Reigns is talented. I'm ready to see somebody carry the titles for a little bit. Three and a half years is ridiculous as a champion because then... You basically squash your whole entire roster with no one else to really be a legit challenge. So hopefully Cody does the job. And with The Rock looming around too, since his return on a Monday Night Raw earlier in the month, I don't know what Rock plays into this. I don't know if it becomes a triple threat, but I feel that at the end of the day, still Cody should be the one to win those titles at WrestleMania. And that brings us to the end of the Royal Rumble review this year. So what are my overall final thoughts on this 
pay-per-view. I, okay. Nothing will compare to how bad the 2022 Rumble was because the 2022 Rumble was bad. <laughs> it was not the greatest, and that is how you messed, mess up a Rumble, for real. I will say, however, I thought this Royal Rumble was decent. The Women's Rumble obviously was the best match of the four. It was a typical Roman's Reigns match, which was still pretty okay. The Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens match was actually pretty good, but the ending soured it for me. And the Men's Rumble was my worst match only because of the fact that it was predictable. I'm happy that Cody won, but there wasn't really any gravitas or showmanship or any surprises for that matter like the Women's Royal Rumble had. So with that being said, we here at the Biconics Wrestling Podcast use the empanada scale, which is out of 10. And I'm going to give the Royal Rumble 2024 six and a half empanadas out of 10. For the reasons that I mentioned before, the women's Royal Rumble match killed it. Roman Reigns' match was what it was. It is your typical paint by numbers match, which was okay. Kevin Owens and Logan Paul had the decency to maybe be pretty good, but the ending really took me out of it, and the men's was boring. I hate to say it, but I give this a six and a half empanadas out of ten. I still enjoyed it, but I wish there was a little bit more meat on the bones, so to speak. And with that is the end of the Grapple Gurus review for the Royal Rumble 2024. I thought this was a really fun one. I got to watch it with our other co-host, Andrew. And even though he's not a WWE guy, we had a good time just hanging out and talking. What does the next upcoming month, now with this being the last pay-per-view of January, what can you expect to see in the upcoming month of February? Well, you will need to stay tuned to the social medias for more information down the line for specific dates. But February is gearing up to be a pretty fun month as well. At the time of this recording, we are just mere days away from NXT's first PLE of the whole entire year, which is going to be Vengeance Day. Me and Will, our Los Chicos Gordos team, are really excited to finally get our first NXT PLE of 2024, and the card for Vengeance Day looks really snacked. Then we fast forward to the end of the month where we have back-to-back pay-per-views, First, we have TNA's No Surrender pay-per-view coming all the way from Louisiana. And then the following day from Perth, Australia, we have WWE's second PLE of the year in the Elimination Chamber. I'm super excited to be covering all these shows as well as the rest of the boys. So make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to follow us on Patreon. You can follow us on the social medias subscribe to your favorite podcasting network we're literally trying to create our own roman empire so to speak i have been mikey el jefe himself and i want to thank you for rocking with me during my first solo review of the year for a ple i'm super excited to cover vengeance day with will later next week so stay tuned for that live stream but from myself and the rest of the biconics boys remember take care of yourself love one another And as always, stay biconic, all you guys, gals, non- and mom-binary pals of the internet. We'll see you for the next live stream, but until then, ta for now.